The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Good morning to you and a very warm welcome wherever you're watching this service. This is a service of Holy Communion in traditional language. It's being recorded at St. James's Church in Durris. Today is the second Sunday before Lent. You are indeed most welcome. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Collect Epistle and Gospel of the second Sunday before Lent. Let us pray. O Lord God, who seest that we put not our trust in anything that we do, mercifully grant that by thy power we may be defended against all adversity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here beginneth the 15th verse of the first chapter of the letter of Paul the Apostle to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all might believe through him. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
Thanks be to thee, O Lord. As I mentioned last Sunday in the service as we celebrated Candlemas, we were looking forward to last Tuesday to see what the groundhog might say. And judging by the very stormy, wet, cloudy, windy weather at the beginning of last week, I think we can firmly say that spring is on its way. The Sundays before Lent are the beginning of what we call in the church ordinary time or green time, so hence the green colour of these robes. And also the focus as we begin to look towards Lent and Passion Tide and Holy Week, the focus today is on creation. And as I pondered these readings, I was brought back many years ago to our first adventure with Christian aid. And now it was that Andrew Coleman, who came to our parish to preach here at the church and then to talk to the children about the work of Christian aid in Haiti. And at that time he was advocating for the farmers in Haiti and in particular the dairy farmers and how terribly impoverished they were. And we were trying to help them to set up a rudimentary, a simple dairy industry. And it was beautifully resonant because one of my own colleagues here in this parish, Canon McManway, was instrumental with local farmers in setting up the local creamery, the local co-op, to help farmers to use milk to go on to produce other products, butter, cream products, cheese products, etc. And now if we look at our own country and our export market, we have moved on and evolved from those simple days into a thriving dairy industry. So this is what we were trying to do with the people of Haiti, help them in a very simple way to start that process. And Andrew was telling us one of the things about Haiti and in particular the poverty there, the means of cookery for the people was charcoal. And of course, as we know, charcoal comes from trees that are heated up to a very high temperature and then charcoal is made in that process. But the real problem for Haiti was that there was 99% deforestation. So in other words, there were 1% of trees left on that island. And there lies in, of course, the problem. If we think of our picture or the classic postcard of somebody washed up on a desert island, it's always sand and one tree. And if you wanted to cook and you cut down the one tree, then what would you do for shade and shelter, apart from heat, of course, to heat a fire? So as we pondered the great difficulties that those farmers had in Haiti, one of the things we had to do was to help them with education too, and of course the wherewithal to be able to start planting trees and forest their country once again. And so the cutting down of the tree deprives you not only, of course, of your means of heat or charcoal, but also of all the other things associated with trees. And in our parish we've always thought and reflected about the idea of the tree of life and how it was that all the birds of the air sheltered in its branches. We're mindful today as we ponder creation, the tree of life planted in the middle of it. And so if you cut down the tree, the shade and the shelter is gone. There are no places for the birds of the air to nurture and rest. As we think of our own planet in these challenging times, we're grateful to the young people of this world for bringing global warming to our attention. The difficulty we all face is compounded when it becomes their difficulty. Our journey has been long on this planet. Theirs is only beginning. And so for all of us, the task of dealing with climate issues and doing all that we can to help to save our planet is a really important thing, the top 
of the agenda. Because, as I've already said, if we cut it down, then there is no place to shelter. Of course, we realise that an awful lot of the deforestation taking place in so many parts of the world is to do with poverty. Poverty on the one hand and greed on the other. The greed of the Western world and the poverty of the developing world. And so as we begin our journey in green time, may we be reminded of the love of God for us in creation. The tree of life, the tree of love was planted there to feed all of us, not just some of us. To nurture all of humankind and all the animals and all the plants and all the fish. And if only some corner the market and hoard it for themselves, then everybody else will be deprived. And the degree of deprivation in the world is the issue that Christian Aid pointed out to us and indeed they point out to so many other people. We are called to love our neighbour as ourselves. And in these times, it isn't easy. Yes, of course, we acknowledge that. Most recently in our community, we have seen many deaths in a local nursing home called Deer Park and the struggles of the frontline workers there to deal with the grief of their friends, not patients, but residents, those for whom Deer Park is a home. And also the wonderful staff in Bantry Hospital and so many other care facilities in our local community. So if you have a moment, why not drop a note to the staff in those places and say how much you value the work they are doing. A simple thing for all of us to do to show that we care, that we love. We don't have to leave our homes because, of course, another frontline worker that we often forget in all of this is our wonderful postman, postal service. And, of course, now our post person will collect our post as well as deliver it. And so on our journey, our journey through the Lord's creation, surrounded as we are so many signs and wonderful symbols of beauty and majesty, may we be enabled through his grace to play our part so that we would thrive and flourish and all of us would thrive and flourish. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness, all the days of their life. 
And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, O, to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins, <coughs> manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them unto, unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, 
to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this as often in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Draw near in faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favour and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. <laughs>